Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Harry Potter Theory. In this video, we'll be taking a look at some of the characters in the series that are no longer with us, except of course, they are with us because they're ghosts. Throughout the Harry Potter books and films, ghosts are quite prevalent, particularly at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. The school seems to be home to quite a few of them, and I've always wondered, how many are there? Are there any that we don't know about? In this video, we'll be taking a closer look. Before we start, let's be totally clear on what characterizes a ghost. A ghost, as defined in the world of Harry Potter, is a transparent, three-dimensional imprint of a deceased witch or wizard that continues to exist in the mortal world. Returning to the world as a ghost is not something that muggles have the option of doing, and it is limited to witches and wizards. Those who decide to return to the mortal world as a ghost do so because they have unfinished business. This prevents them from moving on to the next dimension, Though they remain in the land of the living, their existence is quite different from the time that they had during their mortality. A ghost's existence is very limited in that they no longer have any sort of physical pleasure. They aren't capable of learning new things, and they harbor any sort of resentments that they had from their mortality for the remainder of their existence, rendering them entirely incapable of moving past things. While they exist and have a semblance of a physical form in the land of the living, ghosts are mostly incapable of affecting objects beyond water, fire, and air, in which they can create disturbances. Ghosts pass through solid objects seamlessly, and the immediate vicinity around them will feel very cold. Additionally, witches and wizards are much more likely to pick up on the presence of a ghost than a muggle. With all of the above out of the way, let's dive into all of the ghosts that are present at Hogwarts. Number 1. Nearly Headless Nick Nearly Headless Nick was a 15th century nobleman who actually attended the school. His full name is Sir Nicholas de Mimsey Porpington. Nick is notably the Gryffindor house ghost and is nearly headless because he technically still has it. Nick was a wizard at the court of Henry VII and fell in love with Lady Grieve, who was a lady in waiting. When Nick attempted to fix her crooked teeth, the spell backfired and Grieve grew tusks instead. Nick was sentenced to death. Nick is very dramatic and after he died, he even wrote a ballad about his own demise, entitled The Ballad of Nearly Headless Nick. Here's the first verse. It was a mistake any wizard could make, who was tired and caught on the hop. One piffling error, and then, to my terror, I found myself facing the chop. Alas for the eve when I met Lady Grieve, a strolling the park in the dusk. She was of the belief I could straighten her teeth, next moment she'd sprouted a tusk. Number 2. The Bloody Baron the Bloody Baron was a Slytherin house ghost and a hot-tempered man who would eventually go on to kill Helena Ravenclaw, the daughter of Rowena Ravenclaw. Helena is later known as the Grey Lady, another ghost of Hogwarts that we'll get into next. The Bloody Baron's death is quite morbid, as he murdered Helena after she refused his advances. After killing her, he took his own life. The chains that the Bloody Baron has on him were an act of penitence for the actions that he took with Helena. An act of penitence is an expression of sorrow or remorse for sins. Number 3. The Grey Lady The Grey Lady is also known as Helena Ravenclaw. She was the daughter of Hogwarts founder Rowena Ravenclaw. She is the house ghost for Ravenclaw and was eventually killed by the Bloody Baron, as I mentioned earlier. Helena stole her mother's diadem and went into hiding in the forests of Albania. Interestingly enough, these were the same forests that Voldemort would later frequent. Voldemort found the diadem that Helena had hidden in a hollowed out tree. After finding it, Voldemort turned it into a horcrux. Helena would later help Harry locate the diadem. Number 4. The Fat Friar The Fat Friar was a jolly man who looked like a monk. He was the Hufflepuff house ghost and was a Hufflepuff himself back in the day. He has a reputation for being helpful and kind towards all Hogwarts students. He was executed by his fellow churchmen after they grew suspicious of his magical abilities, particularly his ability to cure pox and pull rabbits out of their communion cup. Number 5. Professor Binns Professor Binns, aka Cuthbert Binns, is the current History of Magic professor at Hogwarts. He taught in classroom 4F on the first floor, and he continued to teach there post-mortem. Binns' lessons were considered to be some of the most boring at Hogwarts, and he made no effort to learn his students' names, calling Hermione Miss Grant and Harry Potter Perkins. Binns slept in front of the fire in the Hogwarts staff room one night and died in his sleep. The next morning, he left his body behind and got up to teach as if nothing had happened. It stated that the most exciting thing to ever happen in his class was when he entered the room through the blackboard. Number 6. Moaning Myrtle I'm sure you know Moaning Myrtle. She was a student at Hogwarts around the same time as Tom Riddle and died to the basilisk that lived inside of the Chamber of Secrets. While she was still alive, Myrtle was in Ravenclaw House and was constantly teased and bullied at the school because of her physical appearance. 
Post-mortem, Myrtle inhabits the first floor girl's bathroom of Hogwarts. In June 1943, Myrtle was teased by a student named Olive Hornby. This left Myrtle in quite a state, and she ran into one of the stalls of the first floor girl's bathroom and began crying. Shortly after entering the bathroom, Tom Riddle entered and opened the Chamber of Secrets. When Myrtle heard a boy's voice, she asked him to go away, and Riddle ordered the basilisk to directly stare at her, killing her. Myrtle proves to be quite a frequent companion to Harry throughout the book's films. Number 7. Sir Patrick Delaney Podmore Sir Patrick Delaney Podmore, also dubbed Sir Properly Decapitated Podmore by Nearly Headless Nick, was a playful charismatic wizard who was decapitated, subsequently becoming a ghost. Sir Patrick was in charge of the Headless Hunt, which is an organization of decapitated ghosts that play headless games. Podmore famously denies Nearly Headless Nick's entrance into the organization because his head is technically still attached to his body. It has been speculated that Sir Patrick is related to Sturgis Podmore, who is an active member of the Order of the Phoenix. Number seven and a half. Peeves the Poltergeist. What a wonderful kindred spirit. I say seven and a half-ish because Peeves is considered to be, according to JK Rowling, an indestructible spirit of chaos, and not a ghost. Peeves has been at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry since its inception in 993, and he is said to have come with the building. Some have speculated that Peeves is simply a manifestation of students' mischief, an embodiment of disorder. Throughout the ages, Peeves has caused all sorts of mischief at the school, and has been the source of much trouble. The only people able to control Peeves, somewhat, are fellow ghost, the Bloody Baron, as well as Albus Dumbledore. Peeves was a considerable source of stress for groundskeeper Argus Filch, and the two were sworn enemies for over 25 years. And that concludes the list of named ghosts. However, we do know that there are many more at the school, as shown in the following excerpt from the Philosopher's Stone. About 20 ghosts had just streamed through the back wall, pearly white and slightly transparent. They glided across the room, talking to each other and hardly glancing at the first years. The second indicator that there are more ghosts is from a passage in the Chamber of Secrets. The dungeon was full of hundreds of pearly white translucent people, mostly drifting around a crowded dance floor, waltzing to the dreadful, quavering sound of 30 musical swords, played by an orchestra on a black draped platform. Of course, some of these ghosts could have been from outside Hogwarts, but likely not all of them. The bottom line is that there are lots of ghosts at the school. And that concludes the video. I hope you guys learnt a little bit about the ghosts of Hogwarts. If I missed any, or if you have any questions, please leave them down below. Until next time, there is plenty to be learned even from a bad teacher. What not to do, how not to be.